I'm in the process of revamping my website, Exo McKenna, and I'm so excited because I launched it actually a few years ago, but the renovation took over my life, so I couldn't write blog posts as frequently as I wanted to, but I really loved writing them, so stay tuned for the relaunch of ExoMcKenna.com very, very soon. I actually used to design websites for creators and other small businesses, and Squarespace was always my platform of choice. Whether you want to blog about your projects like I do or even sell products online, Squarespace has an amazing user-friendly platform for you to build, share, and sell online. Go to squarespace.com slash XO for a free trial so you can check out all of the features and start building the way you really want your website to look. And then when you're ready to launch your website, use offer code XO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when you're shopping on your iPhone or computer. So when I'm not shopping an estate sale or flea market for vintage finds, I am scouring the internet for the perfect pieces of decor for my home. And even better, if I can get deals on the pieces that I find, Honey is the completely free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart when you're shopping online. If you don't already have Honey, you could be missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a favor when shopping online. So get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash DIY. That's joinhoney.com slash DIY. Like most of you guys know, I have been renovating our 112-year-old cottage, one DIY project at a time. And most days, I don't even have time to think about what to eat. But I don't want to resort to eating out and fast food, so I need meals ready to go at home that are easy. We have loved having fresh meal kits in the fridge from HelloFresh, and now every plate is offering fresh, delicious meals at an even lower price. Get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering the code XO149. That's just a dollar 49 a meal which is crazy so go to everyplate.com slash podcast and use code xo149 thanks to everyplate for sponsoring today's episode Hey guys, welcome back to With My Own Two Hands podcast. I have my mom here again. Hi guys. We have so much fun doing the podcast though. Well, let me preface. Uh, We have a lot of fun talking to each other. So we're just deciding to record it. And bring y'all along. (laughs) And sit in a chair. And sit in a chair with a microphone and some cameras. Like no big deal. Do you know what I mean? Come sit, come sit. Um, So my dog Kinsley is also here. Um, You need to go, you need to come up here and lay down. Come on. So today I wanted mom to come and talk about vintage and antique decor, just things that we love, you know, just continuing to talk about things that we love. And I think you actually, I mean, I remember going to flea markets in Canton, Texas, when I was really young, you used to drag me there and I used to hate it. Yeah, I don't know why when you said you invited me to come talk about it, my mother instantly came to, (laughs) granny came to my mind where you should have asked her. That is true. (laughs) My grandma does have some, some, granny has some treasures for sure. She does. So I guess it's, it's pretty much been part of our family for so long finding antique you know searching for antiques and restoring my grandmother used to do trunks she used to restore trunks didn't she right. and upholster furniture I remember upholster her doing that and and she would line the inside of the trunks redo the inside and all the little compartments that we didn't know what they were for but she would know what they were for the, whether they were for combs or jewelry or hide away money you know when they would travel hide away money yeah, they would put these did she ever find on- any money in there she found things, but I don't know if she ever oh, found not money. any money. Mm-hmm. I found some things in one, but they would, uh, you know, they would put their clothes and everything in these uh, in Europe and then come over in boats. Ah, yeah. And that's why a lot of them are flat top because they could stack on top of each other. And that so, makes sense. Instead of like the the hump. Yeah, and they would put their belongings. Why did they in start there. making them with a hump? Do you know? Versus. Since trucks trunks were for traveling, well, I'm sure it's not because they knew I would love those more. But 
But they might not have been because of not. that. No, no, I don't know. If anybody knows, let us know. Yeah, let us know why they started making trunks with the hump yeah, versions. They're beautiful. They are really. They they're are not really good for beautiful. coffee tables though. A lot of people use them as coffee tables and trunks. Yeah, side tables. And so you would stuff. think that the trunks that are flat have so many other purpose, like stacking when you're traveling and coffee tables and being repurposed. The the humpbacks kind of just have to stay. They just have to. Yeah, they're just. They, for they didn't want you to be transformed they didn't want to be transformed into something else but the humpbacks are always more are they more valuable well they're more sought after so they're less of them out there being sold i see their prices go up but they're usually more expensive they're beautiful though but you can always put glass any of them will have the wooden tops that are not flat they're all right just from the way that they're made but you can put glass on top of them and make make them into out a the table. Ones. Yeah, but they're beautiful. They actually have my, between my grandmother and my mom. They have oh. how many trunks? Oh, too many to count. I think I have fourteen. It's like I who know. needs fourteen trunks? Really? Where she? Where is she traveling to? Me. That she's taking a trunk? I don't. They don't travel. They're 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 stationary yes. and it, it stored away. They're perfect. One and, of them. Yeah, they <clears> have different things in them. Like one time I had your dolls that you hated in them. <laughs> I do not like dolls. I, I do not like things that look at me. But we put Christmas in them. You like know, you things, use them for storage. Mm-hmm. That's things, nice. Yeah. Like our Christmas ornaments that are treasures that we don't want to put in the attic. We put right. them there because they stay in your house. Uh, controlled, you know, air conditioning. Right. Controlled to where you don't have to worry about them. And especially in the humpbacks, they just sit there and hold your stuff. That's wonderful. Well, that and that trunks are just really one thing that um, my mom and my grandma used to look for. I remember going to buy fr- – we had a, a store growing up. My mom opened – well, we opened a store in 2000, and I remember going to Canton and other flea markets um, – not can't. What was the other one on the way to Louisiana? Winnie. Winnie, mm-hmm. to go and look for furniture for like display pieces and things. Um, so we've always really looked for furniture. In my past, I didn't really like it then, but I definitely like it now. Um, but now I feel like we look for bubbles, things like smaller items, not just furniture. Right? Did you mm-hmm. ever used to look for that stuff when we would go to Winnie, or was it really just furniture? Uh, I always look for lamps. I'm a lamp. I love lamps, different lamps. She oh, goes through phase. She I, loves lighting. Yeah. I just found a beautiful lamp from like what? turn of the century. Where? At when? The, did at, you not show me? I I did show you. Was I with you? No. You were in LA. Where did you find that? At that at, at an estate sale I went to, um outside of Fredericksburg. It was at an estate sale. That what? was at the estate sale. The lady came out and said, I'll, oh, you can have one item reserved, oh, yes. but if you reserve the lamp, it yeah. and I go in and get the price tag, you reserve it, you bought it. And so I had to decide outside before I ever saw it. Oh, yeah. No, it is really pretty. It's like very coppery oh. with like glass, like stained glass. It's stained glass. It's it's beautiful. It's brass and copper. And I'll, 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 I'll put a picture. We'll put a picture. <gasps> Um, takes my breath away. It's that might beautiful. be one of the major things that she's found. So yeah. um, now we look, we obviously go a lot. We go to estate sales. We go to thrift shops. We go to flea markets. Uh, we occasionally peruse the auction online like mom has before. I'll tell you a story about that. Oh. Um <laughs> Um, so there's a, there's a lot of different places that you can find vintage and antique decor. And I guess we should start with like what qualifies as vintage and what qualifies as antique. And antique is anything over, I don't think that they qualify anything under 100 years old to be antique. Vintage is around the 40 year mark. So if it's um, my home here would be considered vintage well, because it was bi- oh no my home would be antique your home is a hundred a hundred a hundred yeah, is antique is antique so yeah. vintage is more if it's 40 years you know this is 2023 so we're talking like the 1980s is now considered vintage <laughs> that's not nice well that i mean no it's not but that's the I'm, truth I'm, I'm over the vintage and headed for antique land <laughs> I'm way over vintage. Well, uh, okay. Well, still to you know if you found something prior or you are. <laughs> 
prior to 1983, you are now considered vintage, just so you know. Um, so when we're going, I think that we used to be big thrift shoppers. I think that because thrift shopping has grown in popularity so much over the last several years, yeah. um, it's been harder and harder to find quality decor and quality pieces at thrift stores personally um where we shop i just feel like it's become i i obviously have talked about it a lot and and there's enough stuff out there for everybody so i never gatekeep on where we find stuff where we're going i think it's just all around good if anyone shops secondhand uh for lots of different reasons um but thrift shopping is becoming a little harder. I think we found ourselves more so going to estate sales and flea markets. I feel like that's really where we're um, kind of finding the things. Uh, but when we go into estate sales and looking for quote unquote vintage and antique, we are not appraisers or I'm not looking at a piece and saying, what quality is this? Is this appraised at a certain amount? Is this, I look at something, I'm like, do I like it? Right. We're <laughs> I not buy it. To resell it. Right. We're not, we're looking at, do I love this and do I want to keep it? Exactly. Right. So I feel like sometimes when we find something that may not be as value, valuable to a, like a, a reseller or an appraiser, but we really like it because it's, it could be something that it reminds us of. Or it could be something that we just found and it just like we liked it. Um, it maybe, you know, brought a little bit of like history into our home and it may not be worth it to someone else, but it was worth it to us. And that is is enough for us. So we don't go into any situation thinking like, oh, like you're gonna, this. You're going to die. I, I found. Oh, I'm going to die? I found not long ago. I was somewhere and found. Where are you going to all of these places where you're not taking me? <laughs> you might have been in LA. I don't know. I'm rarely in LA. But, uh, well, but the, um, I found a napkin holder. And if anybody is as old as me, remember the napkin <laughs> holders when we were in school, you had to if push it. If anyone's pushing they antique. Were, they were, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> It was, uh, I don't know if they're antique or even vintage. Well, they definitely are vintage, but uh, it was it was like a, a metal stand-up napkin stand. And you had to push the napkin in to make room to pull the napkin down, and then you could take take the napkin out. The napkins were rectangular. Yeah, like at an old-school diner? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, your great-grandmother, our nanny, when she was in uh, – Younger, when she was working, she managed a cafeteria in an elementary school. Yeah. And these were on every table. And we, we would go over there. We would sit at these tables and they had on every table in this school cafeteria was these napkin holders. I've yeah. never seen them anywhere else that uh, 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 never. Yeah. And we would go and we would take and you could it was hard to take more than one, but you, you could. could. But anyway, and they had to go. She let us go around and fill them and do stuff like that. So you had to push the spring in. in and, and, yeah. yeah. And I came upon one and it was marked $3. I would have paid the lady $35, $300. Because it reminded you of it money. It reminded me of nanny and all those trips we went and eating the yeah. nanny rolls and her making us biscuits. and She the, did make the most incredible rolls. Oh, <gasps> yes. Melt in your mouth. Yes. I have the recipe too. Buttery rolls. Someday I'm going to learn how to cook it. But, oh, yes. <laughs> but in any case, that's an, a great example of it brought back my childhood, my grandmother, uh, Christmas festivals we would go there and eat. Yeah. It was a napkin holder yeah. for $3. Yeah. And Which has no value to anyone no. probably else, but and incredible value in, to her. Yes. I will keep it until, until forever. I will keep it forever because I don't know if I'll ever find another one. I've never looked for one. It was just happenstance that I saw it and almost teared up when I saw it. So You're I know. you choked up already. I know. I'll leave it to you. Thank you. You'll love it. You'll love That's it. wonderful. I, I wonder, have I... Um, now I'm thinking if I've found anything like that, that's not, nothing's coming to mind, but I know I have. Huh. I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. I will, I will think because I definitely I'm have sure found have. some really special things yeah. that, you know, like I just had, had to have and reminded me of something. 
I'm in the process of revamping my website, Exo McKenna, and I'm so excited because I launched it actually a few years ago, but the renovation took over my life, so I couldn't write blog posts as frequently as I wanted to, but I really loved writing them, so stay tuned for the relaunch of ExoMcKenna.com very, very soon. I actually used to design websites for creators and other small businesses, and Squarespace was always my platform of choice. Whether you want to blog about your projects like I do or even sell products online, Squarespace has an amazing user-friendly platform for you to build, share, and sell online. With Squarespace, you can easily display posts from your social profiles directly on your website, easily sell your products with a built-in online store, and really cultivate and engage with your community directly on your Squarespace website with your blog's comment section. So I love chatting with you guys there. Uh, That's why I really want to revamp my website and just have another way to connect. I can like comments and reply in a thread to really keep our conversations going. Go to squarespace.com slash XO for a free trial so you can check out all of the features and start building the way you really want your website to look. And then when you're ready to launch your website, use offer code XO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when you're shopping on your iPhone or computer. Because when I'm not shopping an estate sale or flea market for vintage finds, I am scouring the internet for the perfect pieces of decor for my home. And even better, if I can get deals on the pieces that I find, Honey is the completely free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart when you're shopping online. And this week I was shopping online for a brass pendant light for over our TV so that it made it look more like a piece of art instead of just a TV. And I found one I loved, but it was a little pricey. Within seconds, Honey found a coupon for 20% off. Honey is super easy to use and it doesn't just work on desktops. It actually works on your iPhone too. So you can simply activate it on Safari on your phone so that you can save when you're on the go and shopping online on the go. Because let's be real, who doesn't like to save money on the things that they're already shopping for? If you don't already have honey, you could be missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a favor when shopping online. So get PayPal honey for free at joinhoney.com slash DIY. That's joinhoney.com slash DIY. Like most of you guys know, I have been renovating our 112 year old cottage, one DIY project at a time. And most days I don't even have time to think about what to eat. But I don't want to resort to eating out and fast food, so I need meals ready to go at home that are easy. We have loved having fresh meal kits in the fridge from HelloFresh, and now every plate is offering fresh, delicious meals at an even lower price. Every plate even has meals that can be ready in 30 minutes or even 15 minutes or less, saving us even more time. And extra ingredients never spoil in the fridge because each meal comes pre-portioned with exactly what the recipe calls for. You can even customize every plate meals to your liking, like swapping out proteins and sides or adding, adding protein to veggie dishes each week. I personally don't eat beef or pork, so if I see a recipe that I really like, I can swap that protein for chicken or turkey. Every plate has 26 tasty and affordable recipes to choose from each week, which are 50% cheaper than your average fast casual meal and 25% cheaper than grocery shopping. So you can save on dinner and put more towards something fun to do this summer. Get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering the code XO149. That's just $1.49 a meal which is crazy. So go to everyplate.com slash podcast and use code XO149. Thanks to Everyplate for sponsoring today's episode. Now, there are some um, ways that we have learned over the years with, um, you know, just experience looking at maybe furniture pieces. Like when we walk up to, uh, let's say, a table, um, we can figure out if it's solid wood or veneer and we can tell the quality of a material uh, that could go into like, quote unquote, appraisal or when we walk up to an ornate frame. What do we do? See if it's real wood. See if it's real wood. Ooh, see if it's plaster poured. Poured plaster. That is wonderful. Yeah. So oh. there are things that you can kind of like pay attention to and like up your like 
level of knowledge of the things that you're searching for that would be antique and vintage um, that would help you get a quality piece. And I feel like that will just make you love the piece even more because I'm like, ooh, you know, that's not a plastic ornate frame. You know, that's a, a poured resin or it's it's solid wood um, and it just adds value and it adds uh, it elevates your home too um, so we found a lot of goodies over the years um, like my whole house I think is like 95 yeah. percent secondhand I think where I don't have as many secondhand pieces it would be mostly like my couch and these chairs that we're sitting in aren't mm -hmm. um but all the smaller decor pieces and the entryway, every piece is, is secondhand and um, vintage or frames or, or whatever. Let's, let's actually talk about why we love it. Because I, I love it because I think I find more unique items when they're vintage and antique uh, that's not sitting on a shelf and it's mass produced somewhere um, I think it creates more of an eclectic, interesting home when things are found and curated. Um, it also tells a little bit of history like this, you know, I, I remember where I bought this and, and I remember, I don't know, like I, I, I feel like there's so many reasons why I love going to estate sales and going and finding those, those items. Why do you, why do you I usually, it? I can remember where something was sitting and what house it was sitting uh, yeah, in. Yeah, I can and, too. And who I was with when I saw it and why I wanted it. Sometimes I remember why I have to go back the next day and wait in line again because I didn't get it the first time because I go home and I think about it all night. <laughs> <laughs> so that really gets an uh, imprints it on my mind. But I really think that it's just uh, that if you go to a store and that which there's nothing wrong with that if you need no a and sometimes thing. I live for that we're yeah. not sitting here saying like no, no no I only buy you know like I think I feel like there's some some ways of like going overboard and trying to push a certain lifestyle or what you buy onto other people and no I live for a good new shopping trip I think it I just do it within with with a balance um I do recognize that buying things secondhand from thrift shops and estate sales is keeping those things out of the landfill and less consumption of new things and I, I do think that in in the back of my mind um and I think that there is a way to live with a balance and I think that that's we we do a great job of that with valuing a new thing. Sometimes I just want something that's new that hasn't been touched before. And new things can have a, a, a memory too. Like when totally. I when I go meet you in LA, we go shopping. We can go to a place and I buy something new. Yeah. And I love it. And it reminds me of that. It's anything that you feel that will make your home more, feel your house feel more like a home. Exactly. Then you need to get it. Exactly. I mean, or at least try to get it. And it's just we seem I seem to find more things at estate sales that have history and that's what I gravitate toward. Yeah. Is the history behind those things. And but I'm not above buying a beautiful piece of material to make something out of that I can yeah. get today. Or even a new piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes there's just something to be said about getting something new and like we would be discrediting anyone new, the new ideas that are coming into the world and the new artists that are, you know, cabinet makers and furniture oh, makers yes. that would be making something. We would be discrediting any new ideas by not buying anything new and innovative by only buying old. Um, but then therein lies the story behind it. It would have a story because it would. Of the artist and how the years there would be that a reason took, behind it. Yeah, they took to learn how to do what they're doing and and all to make something that you would value and you would love in your home. So it's it's just a story behind something instead of sitting down and and going through a catalog and having a room and going okay I need a couch I need a chair and I need a coffee table yeah done. like you're checking them off your list yes. and then yes. it has no attack you have no attachment to it it's right. just a physical thing that yeah. you needed uh, yeah right. we don't we don't function like that bottom at all. line is build a home build a home not yeah. a house yeah for sure yeah. um and I guess like if you guys are interested in going to estate sales 
Um, we have a couple of tricks on how to find them in your area. We're not, we don't know much about over, and we know that you guys are listening from all over uh, the world, which is crazy. Thank you guys so much for being here. <laughs> um, but if I, we, we don't know much about um, overseas and, and in other countries, but here in the States, uh, we have a website called estatesales.net that you can actually put in your zip code and it will tell you all the estate sales that are coming up that weekend or in the next, how, how does it do it? Like 15 days? You can put a criteria in a search of like within 50 miles. If you know, mm, that, that's yeah. kind of my limit. If it's more than 50 Yeah, we miles. won't drive over 50 miles yeah. to an estate sale. If I sale. drive two hours, it better be a, a good one. Um, and then you can flip to the map and around your area, they'll be pinpointed. So estatesales.net is definitely a great resource. You can see all the pictures. You can um, go through and see if there's, you know, I, we look at the pictures. That's how we do it. Oh. We You have to look at the pictures to see what's what's going to be. And if you see, for me, a rule of thumb, if I see like at least two things that pique my interest that could be at the estate sale, I think it's a good one to kind of go to. Mm -hmm. You can also see like they'll write out what's going to be at the estate sale. Um, and then they'll also say whether you can get on a sign up list to be like, you know, closer to the front of the line to get in. There's a lot of things, you know, there's a big estate sale kind of thing. Um, <laughs> that you can go, we can go down, but, uh, estate sales are great flea markets. Uh, we pretty much know and have a pretty good idea of the flea markets that are usually in our area. Cause we're always looking and always keeping our ears peeled. But mm -hmm. is there a way that you can look up a flea market? I don't think we've ever looked up flea markets. I think the only way is just to uh, just get on Google and yeah, maybe Google just it. Flea markets, flea markets in near me, wherever, where your, where your town is. And, uh, I'm sure there's be a list that comes up and the dates and. Yeah. And, and then I think like with, with flea markets, there's a lot more, uh, that term is being used a lot broader than just home decor, how it used to be. Mm -hmm. Um, flea markets really started in France. Um, it really was tied to fleas. <laughs> I mean, there, there really is like a backstory behind their name, um, you know, but I think it's broadened over the time because now Romeo um, sells vintage clothing and now there are markets that are called flea markets that are solely for clothing and there's very little home decor. So you kind of have to suss them out, whatever you're looking for. Maybe you are looking for clothing. Um and some will have more new merchandise, people that are yeah. maybe handmade things. Like the, the Rose Bowl flea market, for instance, is the second largest flea market in the world. It was the last time I looked that up. It may still be. Um, and it has like sections. So when you walk into the Rose Bowl flea, it's around the bowl is most like the, the actual bowl, like where they play football around that bowl is all pretty much new merchandise, but it has some sprinkled in. And then you cross over into a section um, that I believe is called the orange section. Wait, I can't remember. It's been a while, but it, another section that's pretty much predominantly home decor. Then you go over the bridges and, and then it's all clothing predominantly. So they kind of section off the market like that because they have so many vendors and most markets will kind of just have them all mixed together. So you kind of just have to suss out Google flea markets in your area, mm -hmm. suss them out, go to them and don't like, don't be discouraged. If you go one time, you don't find anything. You have to keep going because there's always going to be new stuff. There's always going to be vendors that drop out new vendors that come in. Um, yeah, like we went last time, uh, well, time before, to the Fredericksburg one, and there was hardly anybody there. there yeah. People had stopped going. I mean, there were like vacant booths everywhere. And this last time, a couple of weeks ago, when we went, they were all filled up with new people. Yeah. So you just never it's know. Summer, summer's a great time to go to Fleas because there's so many more vendors, you know, so many more people, you know, kids are out of school, you know, kind of yeah. like a, a weekend thing to do. Mm -hmm. I know when we're in California in LA, there's a flea market that we can go to every Sunday. And that used to not be the case. Um, or it just wasn't maybe on my radar. Maybe it was always the case, but there's one every, I always say like Saturday is like relaxing for the summer and Sunday is for flea markets and farmers markets. Like, that's just how the summer is going to go for us. So that's very exciting for me. Um, <laughs> and very sad for me. And very sad for me. I'm not there. <laughs> so there's this other way that you can get your hands on vintage and antique decor. Uh, that's a 
for me, very scary. It should be very scary for you. I'm very terrified. I'm very, I go. very. No. I get on. The other, you get on. <laughs> Estate uh, auctions. I try to delete oh, it. It gives delete, me. Delete, delete, And it just keeps coming back on my phone. Oh, is it now? It's, yes. Oh. oh I did, they it's, got my number. They say that sometimes the auctions are where you get the estate sale stuff first. You know, you can, it's, mm-hmm. you bid on it. It's a whole different game. Uh, sometimes items are pulled out of estate sales physically to be sold online because they know they can get higher dollar for it. So I go into an estate sale auction page knowing that I'm probably going to pay up for this because mm-hmm. you have the whole world bidding on it. Now, <laughs> Mom has a funny story about something that she bought that she didn't buy. The catastrophes always come from this side of the room. It's awful. I'm a, you know, these things don't happen to me. (laughs) Okay, guys, look, I was on the site. I was looking. There wasn't very much that I really was (laughs) that interested in. There were a couple of things, but... Then your dad was welding something outside, and I thought, well, I have to go outside. And my, I was on the the uh, website with my iPad, which is suspended on a yeah arm. Yeah, so, she has like her iPad that actually like stands up on a like a tripod situation. Oh, like yeah. it's not right. like it's like laying down no. where. No, yeah. no puppies could walk across it and hit a button. Which is what she thought could yeah. have happened. Yes. Okay, so your dad needed me to go outside and help help him hold something. He was welding or doing something in his shop. And so I forgot about it. The next morning, I wake up to an email going, congratulations, you are the winning bid. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> she calls me. Well, I'm like, well, I won't tell y'all what I was like, but it was like, <laughs> what? 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 And tell them what it was. It was a <laughs> silverware set, which was, <laughs> I'll take a picnic over a sit down dinner any day. You you got to know. It was a silverware <laughs> flatware so, set. So she has no need for a flatware set. N- it no. wasn't even that cute, if I remember. No, no. I, it was. It's not anything that I would ever. I mean, never. And. I I was I was like what and so I opened it up I it was I was the winning bid for twenty six hundred dollars <laughs> and you know they'll always tell they'll always give you the amount they think it's going to go for that it's worth it was like between uh one thousand and fifteen hundred so it went way they over didn't even valued think, yeah yes they didn't even think it was worth twenty six hundred dollars and then on top of that I had to pay like a <clears throat> 23%. That's the thing we'll get into too. There's an extra fee. Right. Yeah. An extra fee for the auction house. Uh, uh, oh, 23. I owed something like $3,200 for this. And I'm like, whoa, what do I do now? So I got on the phone and it's just like, sh- I'm telling y'all, sheer panic. Yeah. I'm like, my stomach oh, mom's like turned so over. Worried. Yeah. She keeps calling me. She's like, they're going to take my money. I'm like, they're not going to take your money. You did not do this. Like, this is not a thing. Like, oh. we're not. No. Well, to register, you had, you to, had put to put your, put credit, in your credit card. card. Right. So I figured if they hit, oh, well, you know, my credit card company will stand behind me, but they're not going to respect me as a bidder from now on. Although I've never really bid on it. I bid on some plates one time and I got them and mm-hmm. I loved them and I got them. But oh my goodness, I was just thrown for a loop. I didn't. So I emailed them. Well, of course, it's Sunday. All right. So I emailed them and I called them and I left a couple of messages. And Monday, I started again and started again. Well, about Thursday, I get another email. Please contact us because you are the winning bid. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, this is never going to end. It took me almost a month to get that straightened out. Finally, a gentleman called me and he was head of the auction house to tell me that I was the winning bid. <gasps> and I said, no, sir, I am not the winning bid. I said, I've been emailing you and emailing you and calling you. I'm not, I'm, I wasn't even in the house. 
He said, well, could someone else have placed the bid for you on your behalf? And I said, no, 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 no. They would never have done that. There was nobody here. We, me and my husband were outside. So anyway, we got it straightened out and he was very gracious. He said, okay. And I said, can't you just auction it in your next auction, auction it again? And he said, yes. He said, we'll take care of it. I don't know. He said, it must've been a glitch. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. But it was, that's a, that's a weird situation. We're not saying that those things will happen. All the time that I've never heard of that happening. That yes. just happened. To things, things happen to me. I don't, I don't know. But I thought even that maybe it was, you can put in your top bid that you will go and then it'll go up just in low increments. But I didn't even do that. I didn't bid on any, there was nothing in, uh, there that I really wanted once yeah. you got in and looked. So there, there was no way. It was just a glitch on their computer system and they, but they straightened it they out. Straightened and he was out. very gracious yeah. and they keep sending me the opening thing to uh, uh, come back and come go back to and another, bid. yeah, yes. come back and bid it on next auction. I even got one that said, I hope you're enjoying your flatware. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> That's actually really funny. I'm like, thank you, but thank, I just said thank you. <laughs> that was it. I just couldn't even. Well, go. so state uh, auctions ha- are like a rush. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, you think about an auction, like if you've ever seen an old school auction where the guys are like, 25 there, 25 there, you know, like a real auction. It's incredibly, I feel like fast paced. You're don't know if you're going to get something you, someone else bids and you have to bid right away. And there's a time clock going and there's the, it's, it's like a game. It gives me uh, so much anxiety. Yeah. Like it, I would not thrive. I don't, uh, it wouldn't be worth it. I don't think that there were going to be anything that I want bad enough to have to go through that process. Um, so if you enjoy that kind of like, you game, almost have to go into it. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, I'm not going to be upset about it. Yeah, But I think that you thrive on that game. Like, I think you like the game. Of well, the I am not like that. If I don't get it, I'm very unhappy. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you don't so, want the chance. I don't of not like it. I don't like it either. Yeah. No, that's not my favorite thing to do as an auction. So auctions, but you can find really amazing, cool mm-hmm. antiques and vintage on auction. Uh, but there's a whole nother layer of it where not only are you paying for the item, but you're also paying a percentage to the auction house. Mm-hmm. And that could be quite a lot, especially when you're finding something that is, is substantially priced. I was looking at a floor length vintage mirror, um, from like the 1800s <laughs> that I really wanted. Um, and it, the bid started really low, but I knew it was going to go pretty high like into like the thousands and I think the bid when I was looking at it was like around two hundred dollars or so but when you know that a, an item is going to go into the thousands you have to pay around 20 25 somewhere in their percent to the auction house so if you're buying something for let's say just a thousand dollars that's going to be 250 dollars additional to the auction house. So that could get really pricey. Like I start to think about that working into the price of what I'm paying. And now I don't value it at 1250. I valued it at a thousand. I don't want any more amount. You know, like it's. Yeah. You have to, you have to decide to enjoy an auction. And then to ship it to you. Yeah. You have to pay to ship it. But if you are, if you are going to do an auction, you need to go in and say, okay, this piece, because you have some time before, if you see a piece, like if you see a painting or a sculpture or a flatware set that you want, then if you're going to pay the top dollar, I'm going to pay for it, including the upcharge to the premium, then you're going to I want to pay a thousand dollars for something or five hundred dollars for something. Then you put in that a bid accordingly a, and a set threshold. it. A, that this is as far as I'm going to go, and you can type that in, and they'll go up. You could get it for two hundred and fifty if no one bids against you. They'll mm-hmm. only go up in the increments that it they're set to go up. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. So you could get it for less than that, and then walk away. Yeah. So, so, so those are places that we feel like you can um, really find some nice really cool vintage and decor items. There's obviously um, stores um, that would be the reseller part of things where they have gone to the estate sales, the auctions, the flea markets, and now they're putting it in a very curated environment um, as their store and then selling it on a, a little bit higher price, but that's their business, you know, and you can find really good places. Like if you don't, if you don't like to like search and dig and clean up and fix 
things. You know what I mean? Like then um, shopping in a boutique would be for you. But let's talk about what we look for most. Do you have like a, a thing that you're always, well, I know that you have one thing that you're always looking for. So we can bypass the frames. Well, yeah. So frames. Always frames. <laughs> Frames with no art or frames with art that can be taken out are always things that always. we're both looking for. Mom always obviously paints. Um, she's an incredible painter, but she's always needing to frame her art. So we're always looking for frames. I want to take this moment to thank, uh, to just uh, tell some, the people that I have said, I'm not really interested in the art. I just want the frame. If I've told you that and you painted and it, I apologize. Because Mom has a tendency to offend people. <laughs> I don't mean I it. had to make her so I had to change. I was like, how about I, you say it this way? I don't say that anymore. Yeah. I don't. She shouldn't. Because we got kicked out of a booth one time because mom said, well, I don't <laughs> I don't want the art. I just want the frame. And he was like, Not today, ladies. Ah, and he like shot no. us. He like shooed us out of his booth. I was like, so well, it was like it was a it was that was just a writing he had just written Mom, something art is like objective but he was just written something <laughs> like a uh the heart of the home is the heart heart is oh, the home horrible. or something it was just he it wasn't really art is subjective okay maybe someone really values that but i told her when we go he into booths or we're at a place you should look around and if you see a lot of frames with art in it that you like, go to the person and be like, do you have any frames that don't have art in them? You see, oh wait, you have a lot of beautiful framed art. Do you have any frames that are loose? Because I paint, I was looking for some frames. Then they won't be offended. But that frame was really, he had a really pretty <laughs> frame on that ugly heart. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was so. So bad. we're not doing that. So, so we do I apologize. Yeah. So we do look for frames. Yeah. Um. Is there something else that you normally look for? Uh, lamps. I love. Yeah, Mom loves unique loves a good lamps. lamp. Mm -hmm. Lamps are good. Lamp. Lamps are hard to find because uh, you think about an estate sale, they're not going to have a ton of lamps to pick mm -hmm. from. So, um, they're kind of few and far between. I actually haven't found many mm -mm, um, right. lamps that I really love. Um, but well, the globes of lamps, like mm -hmm. I have a, a floor stand lamp that's really gorgeous, but the lamp is like an a, a, an up saucer, mm -hmm. I guess I would. And those are not found, as we were talking about the other day. You don't find them very much because if the lamp tips yeah. over and falls – the first thing to hit is the glass globe. Yeah. So you don't find them very often and I'm on the hunt for that. But yeah, those are those, those are, are hard to come those by. are hard to come by. A pretty one. Right. A, one that I like. So you add that into it and it's really hard. But um frames. Anyway, frames I look for frames. I I specifically still look she paints a lot of art for me, but I specifically look for I'm on the hunt right now for tiny, like like small art. Like chunky thick ornate frames with holes that are only like two inches square for art I just want chunky small because I feel like I have so many situations that are in the house where I'm trying to decorate and have like a a moment I want to create on like a smaller wall that I don't my, the frames that I have are too large scale even if they're mm -hmm. on the smaller scale so I always look for like I'm looking for some small ones right now mm -hmm. um I also look for, let me look at my book. Oh, I looked for books forever. Yeah. Above us, if you're watching, I'll put in the link to our to my YouTube video where I decorated our bookshelves. Along the top of these bookshelves behind me that I built, I lined up vintage books that I've collected over the last two years of being in Texas. And I used almost every one of them. So I was I like, know. okay, I'm glad I found that many. I kept thinking, what are you going to do with all these books? And then it look. It's gorgeous. It, it's so it's cool. Really nice. Yeah. Uh, so books, you've been looking for some books lately, mm -hmm. like hard, when we say books, we look for hardcover books in pretty covers. So like the covers without the sleeve have mm -hmm. to be in pretty colors, but also taking it a step further. And yes, I do not read all of these books. I do like them as decor, but I do want their contents to be something that I would be interested in. Let's say poetry, architecture, art and design, interior design, poetry, did I say poetry? Mm -hmm. um, I novels, if, like classic novels. Yeah, we want Jane good, Eyre. good vibes in our home. Yeah. Like we were at the, we were at an estate sale just the other day and 
it had uh, bad vibes. Beautiful, yes. Remember those beautiful books? <laughs> I went vibes. all the way over. For, I, I take pictures when we go through the um, um, pictures of that of the upcoming estate sale. I, I take snapshots of what we're interested in, so when we go, we can just look at those and go straight to them. And especially if we're number fifty or sixty in line, you know, you can kind of try to get what you want, what you went for. And we went, and there were the three books that were left, but they were criminal justice, yeah. and uh, I, 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 it wasn't something that I really wanted on my bookshelf. Yeah, shelf. we wouldn't it buy those difference. books, even though they had good covers. And you two, know, we, you will pull a book and and read through it. Yeah, I, we do. I mean, I do. I have mine are a little more accessible. Yours is up high, but mine's pretty high. Yours is pretty high. But look but, how cool they are as decor with all those colors, right? Like it. it I'm not no it's offense beautiful. to the book, yeah. but it, you know, they, they are serving a different purpose, you know, mm-hmm. and most, some of them are very vintage and even flipping the pages, I could ruin the book, you know, like it's, yeah. they're pretty old. I, I tend to gravitate towards like the tattered ones, but, um, love a good book. I love to decorate. I love big, bigger books for coffee tables and stuff. So estate sales yeah. are great places to find those at in flea markets. Travel too. books are Travel really books beautiful. Are beautiful. Yeah. So pick the books like if you're look if you want books in your home for decor, then you can look for those types of of things that are interest of you. Cooking, you know, beautiful cooking for, books the, kitchen. for the kitchen. Oh yeah. yes, those you are. You can gorgeous. find a lot of those at the estate sales. Actually, a lot of those. Uh, the hardback book, the cover is also printed on the 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 front hardback. Yeah, you know, the the front. You like it when they're like that. Yes, I do. Oh, I I like it solid. I don't want any design on well, it. Well, a kitchen, one, I like the kitchen one because it's yeah, always food. Teach their own. We don't cook, though, so. Yes. That's the only way pretty soon it's going to be in our kitchen. But so, anyway. So we look for art, frames, books, lamps. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I always look for that I think is incredibly, like, uh, the, the the garage at estate sales is undervalued. Mom doesn't really like to look in the garage. I'm like, but is there hardware out there? She, yeah. I go for tools. I go for hardware. I found tools that I use all the time at a discount at an estate sale. I have my Craig pocket hole jig, the whole set that I got from an estate sale. I've got uh, screwdrivers and things out there that I've got on a, like such a like discount, you know, especially when you're buying a house, those can be expensive and hardware, the entire kitchen. Every piece of hardware except for the refrigerator was found at an estate sale in bags for like Three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. I mean, mm-hmm. the all the hardware in the kitchen minus the fridge because those were long. It's it's hard to find big. Yeah. Hard, you you won't ever find like big hardware if you do. Kudos, but the smaller ones, the smaller knobs. You know, yeah. I don't I don't even know why these people have hardware. Just they change it out. They maybe? change it out and they keep it. Maybe. Yeah. Well, it came to my home and they're perfect so that's something that I also I I don't pass up the garage for sure um I also look for like I used to look for glassware a lot like textured glassware really pretty glassware to set the table with that was etched um in a like a full set I uh, would we uh, both did yeah and then I got all those plates and oh, and then we had too many we too many tableware so, many. so we the clear stopped. ones the the you know those beautiful yeah. etched clear ones I've got a whole set of those and my bunko ladies love it I could you could yeah for you the could next set four the whole bunkos, I have different and they do they go they love it they go <gasps> it's so beautiful yeah to so it's on, making it more interesting mm-hmm. because yeah you were yes you could go out and buy you know, full sets at different stores, you know, but these are like, if you're shopping on a budget, these are not a lot of money. Other than that, I I think I look too for like, um, uh, sculptural items, like just really unique things to either put on a bookshelf or, you know, on my kitchen counter or something. Like I found little like bird figurines or my little, my man's up there on my, my statue. (laughs) Up there, Man, I found him him, him at an estate sale, um, and I remember. I, you're right. I remember exactly where he was sitting in what estate sale and who ran it. There you go. That's crazy. It's just an experience, and estate sales. You never know what you're going to find. Even a flea market, you do, you don't go with you. Yes, you may be looking for something specific, mm-hmm. but you, you don't know what its shape 
is going to be or what color you're going to find it in. Or it's just like more unique that way than going out and finding a dresser that's brown that, you know, like, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, we, we have a lot, a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Is there anything else that you look for? I like candle holders. Oh yeah. Ooh, I went through a brass phase. Oh, did you ever? I don't think there's any brass candle holders left out there. I have. <laughs> but at Christmas, it's gorgeous. You put them all out at Christmas. I do. They were beautiful. Yeah. And I use brass candle holders a lot. Yeah. I Everywhere. Might yeah. I was jealous. Uh, see? I was. Because you had all those candle holders. Okay, I've slowed down on the brass. Sure. I'd like to find some can- some uh, candelabras to put on a mantle. Oh, pretty. Yeah, yeah. For sure. On each end, that would be pretty. Yeah. Is there something that, that you've found that besides, oh, so we talked about the lamp you just recently found. Oh, yes. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Is there something that you've found that is just like the best thing that you've ever found? Like, just like, oh. Well, the lamp's pretty much up there. I'm not over that yet, finding that. Yet. Yeah, it's always usually the newest things that you found that you're tied to the yes. most, you know? Because the lady in front of me, that was the uh, estate sale that the ladies came out and the first 10 people got to pick something. And I was like sixth, seventh mm, in line. Yeah. And the first 10 got to pick something. And she was in front of me and she said she wanted two lamps. And I'm like, oh. And she said she wanted that one and an, uh, she wanted two lamps. I don't know if she said those, but she wanted the pink one that was in the living room. And so she went to get the tag for her for that one. And then I said, well, I don't know what other lamp she wanted, but I wanted the one in the foyer. And she goes, that's the other one I wanted. I would not have, if she hadn't done that little exercise of giving everybody one shot at something as we walked in to keep people from running in the door at one time all at the same right. time she the things we wanted the most we could go ahead and get I would not have gotten it and they at, they offered me 30 percent more than I paid for it on my way out oh my gosh <laughs> and there was no way yeah there was no way it was like ah uh, I got it so that was really I mean that was something I also at the last one that I went to on this was in a little town on the east side of Texas I was coming back from seeing Robbie and my mom, a grant your grandmother, yeah. and I stopped and I called you at yeah, that one to see you what yes, you wanted. I remember. Yes, and there was this I got some things. very large uh, picture, beautiful frame of a girl. I don't know who she is, don't know, but it's beautiful. And I'm, I'm if I if I build my new house, if I ever get it walled yeah. up, she's going to go in in my new house. So I I do really love her. Yeah, and uh, she's kind of facing away. I'll have to put a picture up. She's yeah. kind of facing away with a beautiful net shawl hanging behind her. It's Is that really the one pretty. that looks at dad's when dad when he goes to the bathroom? Yeah, it made him uncomfortable. Well, I just it was it's just she said it. She propped uh, it in the bathroom. There's a bench in the in, in the, the guest bath, bath and, and I put it there because nobody goes in there. He's not supposed to go in there. My dad, my dad goes, come here to me. And he he's not supposed to the, go in there. He, he takes me into the bathroom. And I'm like, what are we doing? And he goes, sit right there. And he points at the toilet. And I was like, okay. And so I put the toilet seat down and I sat down and he was like, how do you feel? I was like, oh, this woman's staring at me. She That's has so those funny. eyes too that kind of follow you that like she's looking at you even though you're like there. I know I didn't know here. what y'all were talking about when I walked <laughs> in there and his face that. was beet red. I'm like, what are y'all talking? What's going on in here? <gasps> he was red. Oh, it was so funny. He doesn't turn red very often, yeah. but she's still sitting there. Oh, well, good. He's still Whatever. Uh, but I, anyway, she is really, really she's pretty. pretty. I love her. Okay. A question that I get a lot is do we feel like anything that we found is haunted. What? I know. People ask that. Though. Well, not until now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like anything that you have found is haunted? Why do you say that? <gasps> That's what they asked me. My answer is no, because we go off of vibe and we know I'm a very Oh, that criminal intuitive. justice book. Felt a little creepy, found, right? Felt creepy. It's, it's almost like, I think it's a gift to go into an estate sale <laughs> and find something. Like, I know, like, some things I can look at and be like, ooh. Like, we put that book down real fast. Yeah, I think it's like a a vibe that you get from a piece. I, I get good vibes a lot. Well, we get good vibes on the things that we buy. Hey, and even if the the if it's haunted and it's got good vibes, welcome. Come right. live with me. Yes, so that could <laughs> freaked her out. 
<laughs> She's like, what? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> well, if it, if I feel like it's haunted, it doesn't live with me very long. Well, and it doesn't even come home. No. It doesn't. It's, oh, things that we find that we don't buy. Yeah. Oh, well, yes. Well, yeah, I do feel. Yes. Remember that estate sale we went to? They had all these real weird children. Yes. Yes. Haunted. Haunted. Big time. And then... It wasn't very long. We went to a uh, thrift store, and they were there. <gasps> they were there. They were following the same you. Ones. you. They were following you. Yeah, it was in the same town, and they usually bought but out still, the estate sales after. But still, I they, have I have seen and picked up, or even come close to some things that I felt were those children were are questionable. And I mean, who would buy? It? They were like very. Yeah, they were. They were Som- scary. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, go I, off of vibe. If you get a bad vibe from a thing, don't. Don't buy it. It doesn't matter if it's a good price or it's exactly what you were looking for. If you get a bad, yeah. bad vibe, just like don't do it. Mm-mm. And I feel, I but I feel like everything that we've bought and brought home has, if, if it has any vibe, it has good vibe. Oh, yeah. It doesn't, like, I don't feel like anything. There was a time, okay. <laughs> I don't know if this will stay in, but like, let's go with it. There was a time we were, I was, I was here at the cottage working, um, really early on in the renovation. I was actually working through all of the uh, windows. So I was outside on the side next to our kitchen and I had a table set up and it was around early Christmas. So it was like November. It was cooler. I was out there and I was playing. I always start to play Christmas music like early, right, right after Halloween, like when I'm working or something, like it just makes me happy. So I play Christmas music. And it had been like a a little while. And then all of a sudden my Spotify turned off, like it stopped playing Christmas music. And I don't know, I thought my phone died or something. So I like went over there and I was like, oh no, that's weird. And I turned it back on a little while later, it, the Christmas music turned off again and I turned immediately. It wasn't even like, like I turned and I looked at my house and I was like, okay, we're going to have a problem if you don't like Christmas music. (laughs) I, we're just going to have to be on the same page together. I really love Christmas. I'm going to decorate this house really beautiful for Christmas. I know you like Christmas because you had Christmas lights around the entryway when I bought this house. It's all going to be okay. And you know, it didn't turn off again. Maybe that's what she was afraid of. You were going to go too weird and leave them up all the time. She, well, she left them up. Well, yeah, she didn't. The the other people did, but she, she didn't. The she house didn't, didn't want, run yeah, them up all, the, all time. the time. Yeah. So I was like, it's going to be okay. And it never turned off again. We'll see. Um, I have a few things. I I find that I really, really, really get attached to art that I find. Mm-hmm. There was this one particular estate sale that I was like, I have to be for We were, ended up being second in line to that one. I actually found art. I think all of my favorite things that I have now at that estate sale. So the first, uh, we went for art because they had big, beautiful art. I have the two English setters that oh, are in the- Do you the, know what? that the uh, hunting- Hunting dogs? Like uh-huh. That? Hunting dogs and um, uh, uh, men riding horses like that uh-huh. and hunting English hard, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. are very valuable. You think do that's you find valuable? A, I think I should look it up. I I don't I, I don't do. I mean I do sometimes, but I don't like. They are uh, of vintage uh, scenery. Yeah, they are. Top. Okay, well that one. We went for art. I got that one there. I got, mm-hmm. and I've had several people DM me asking they want it, and I'm like yeah. I'm not selling it. Mm-mm. I have that one. I have my Rembrandt reproduction mm-hmm. of him his profile not by rembrandt I'm but of rembrandt i'm surprised he's, he's gonna not go a- right there oh okay with my two sconces maybe okay. um so my rembrandt i got from there and my roses my potted roses <gasps> all came from the same estate sale and that was a beautiful home oh that yes. had a really pretty courtyard and those things i even think i got my mans from there they've got a lot from there well it it she when had it was good, good taste. yeah she had good taste she had a lot of art didn't you get some like a horse from there or something like a small maybe not I got a lot from I there. St- I pretty much ran in yeah there was and no- put my name so fast that was around the time that we were coming that's with where our I got the dog stickers. the little dog the dog yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's another thing 
I paid $30 for that dog and got it home. A little dog. It, it was like an eight by 10. Uh-huh. And I reframed. This is how much I like this painting of this little black dog. Um, he was cute. He was cute. I, I really liked him. and I, But I didn't really like the frame. So when I got home, I put it in a pretty frame. It's on my big antique, on my big uh, wall, my library wall yeah mom has a huge gallery wall in (laughs) her in her craft room and he's up there and the uh I put him I knew the frame I was going to put him in and when I took him out of the frame it said bought in Kerrville oh flea Kerrville thrift store for 250 are you kidding? Two dollars and fifty cents. I paid thirty dollars, and I went on. That was on the like the third day. He was priced like up there, yeah, way up there. But that's I hilarious. Him. I went back. So yeah, I know. But he's worth it to me. And every time I look at him, I go, "You were worth it to me because yeah. he's so cute. He is really, really. He's really cute. He's, I'll put. I'll get her to put a picture up, and you tell me whether this, she's. You're gonna be on my side. He's cute. I put the English setters. The English setters is in my kitchen. I love them there. Mm-hmm. The Rembrandt is going to go in my living room with two sconces on each side. Uh, They have beautiful gold frames. They're stunning. And they're larger scale, so they'll be Mm -hmm. right for the walls. My flowers, my potted roses that I was just going for the the pot themselves, but then they had roses in them. And and we have taken them under our wing as our babies, and mom and I both keep them alive. Um, so they're sitting on, they're framing each side of my front door on my porch. And I absolutely love them. And the rest of my house is in some form, 95% secondhand. Found at estate sales. Found, I decorate all the time. I kind of move things around. Um, yeah, everything. Look at these encyclopedias I got behind me and art and brassy things. We created a really beautiful a uh, little cottage here full of really, really special things. We have thoroughly, we thoroughly enjoy the hunt that is finding vintage and and, and antique stuff. Um, we enjoy finding like w- things that we never even expected to fall in love with. And we just, we love to do it together. So if you have a friend or a mom that loves to do those things too like we bond over it like it's our fun day out like we get to go to the estate sale like all day of estate sales or all day at the flea market and it's so much fun and when you know we get our tea and our fritter or we'll go have lunch and we'll just like shop and even if we don't find anything it's just fun to do um so if you have a friend and you want to see if you can find some really like special things for your home go to the estate sales look them up like grab a friend and go this weekend it's um, good if you and your friend like different things too. You don't have to like. Oh, the it's same way better. <laughs> it's way better because mom has like gotten. Now she's like, she <laughs> yesterday. Mom goes, ooh, look at this pink color. Ooh, look at this pink color, and they're all moody <laughs> tones. I'm like, mom, that looks just like my entryway. Mom, that looks just like the uh, you know. And I was like, You're be- she's and I quote, I said. You are becoming me, my style. And she goes, eh, why fight it? <laughs> it's, it's eh. you know. Well, and I kind of went, you know, like more, like I started uh. incorporating more vin- um, French kind of things, mm-hmm. especially with the house um, in California. And it like, I can see how you can, you can be so influenced by the person that's there, around but you. But there's a lot of things that are vintage. You can, you can look at oh, vintage God, mailboxes. Yeah. I have a, I have vintage mem- mailbox. mailboxes. That, oh yeah. The, the ones, ones that, that go ha- on the house. I have one of those. Yeah. Uh, for my fictitious house. Um, you can have door stops. Yeah. You can collect door stops. A lot of people do that. They're very vintage. I mean. A lot of people collect those. If you have six dogs you do because they knock the doors closed or oh yeah I i've have, never heard of collecting door stops yes no yes. they can be very uh collectible your door just doesn't stay open when it opens it i have two that doesn't if they, oh they kind of that's close true them. you have like a suction in your house too mm-hmm. if one opens the other one will kind of right close. yeah yeah and let's see what else there's a lot of things there's a lot of stuff People, i mean there's vintage lunch boxes uh oh, teapots yeah. and from all different decades you can imagine what's vintage is over 40 years old so you're thinking like early 1980s and the 70s very different styles mm-hmm. from the 50s very different styles from the 40s 
30s, you know, like that's all would be considered vintage until you got to the 20s. And then some of the 20s would be considered yeah. antique. So you yeah. can like over the span yeah. of yeah. those yeah. however many years, you know, from like, I guess, 90 to 40 years old, that's a lot of different styles to be considered mm -hmm. vintage. Now, we gravitate right. more towards what we think ride the line between now vintage and antique because mm -hmm. we like the older end of that spectrum, um, like the ornate frames. And like you mm -hmm. would see it, you know, in, in France, in the Louvre, in homes that have been sitting <laughs> forever. Like that's yeah. that's what we gravitate towards. But still, like there's some really incredible like the 70s that's a Mid very specific style mid-century modern, style. Mid -century they, modern yeah. is now lots of it is now vintage and mm -hmm. um even like well the 50s had a very specific it's funny look i said mid-century modern to be vintage well because modern modern gets a weird name yeah. it's not modern doesn't mean now contemporary means now it's an ever yeah. evolving the word contemporary is whatever's con right now um and modern was actually a style, mm -hmm. several styles. Actually, I think it could be, I don't yeah. know. We're now we're getting into a whole different yeah. conversation. <laughs> and we do that. <laughs> we we got off on a tangent. Um, but moral <laughs> to the story, there's a lot, there's a lot, a lot out there um, that can really be, make your home feel more curated and more um, unique and have a story to tell and mix in with your already existing furniture and your already existing home decor. Um, so we hope this inspired your next trip. Just search for some, you know, estate sales and flea markets in your area. Share with us what you got. Comment what you find. That's always fun. I want to hear what you guys find. And if you see us at an estate sale, oh, yes. come say hello. Please. Flea markets, estates, anywhere. If you see us anywhere, yeah. I'll please stop by and say hi. Um, I always ask every time I meet you, one of you guys, I'm like, what'd you find? Because I want to know. 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 It's so much fun. But we hope you guys enjoy this episode and it was inspiring your next home decor trip. You know? Right, Mom? Uh, when, when are we going to our next estate sale? Well, estate I was, sale. as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, as a matter of fact. Back. I was looking on the way over here. There may be one or two. Weekends. Oh, there is. Yeah, I but thought you said they weren't very good this week. Oh, well, not around here, but heading. Oh, oh, we may oh, go see our because we're Robbie going. This yeah, weekend. we're going to see my brother. So, so we're gonna look kind of down that direction. Oh, I forgot about that. I mean, you we know, have all day on Friday, we might as well. Oh, this is wonderful for us. We didn't. You see we how were... excited we get? <laughs> we we're say... so excited, and we've got from here to there. So, see some of the ones that are. 15, 60 miles away, we'll be just passing right on through there. Oh, yeah. And we can shop fast. Oh, and yeah. If you see a, uh, when I was little, we would go and we, antiques, boy, my mom and dad would turn. Oh, yeah. Real fast. Yeah. Get, get out of town. You get the best yeah. deals. And a lot of times they don't even know what they have. So let us know what you guys find. If you see us out, definitely say hi. Let us know what you want to hear on the podcast next by commenting. If you're watching the YouTube video or if you're listening on the go, send me a DM. If you have any ideas, we're always, always open and we can't wait to see what you guys find. Uh, we will see, oh, Kinsley's getting active now. We will see you guys in two weeks and I'm working on tons of projects here at the cottage. So make sure you're up to date uh, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.